Zan Zindagi Azadi. Three beautiful words you may never have heard before ringing out in the streets across Iran. These three words form a protest chant. Their meaning tells you everything you need to know about the protests in which people are demonstrating and dying in Iran. Zan means women. Because it is the women and the girls of Iran who were not just the spark of the current protests, but the heart of them. It started with this woman, Masa Amini. The 22-year-old Kurdish woman was arrested by Iran's morality police, allegedly for violating the country's strictly enforced Islamic dress code. She died in police custody. According to the hospital, she died three days after being arrested. Now, Iranian officials claim she suffered a heart attack due to an underlying medical condition, but her family says... She didn't have an underlying medical condition. They say witnesses told them she was beaten by police. Iran denies those allegations. Iranian officials say an investigation is underway. While some women in Iran and indeed across the world make the choice to wear a hijab or a head covering, in Iran it's become the symbol of a, uh, the power of the patriarchy, the Iranian theocratic regime over women. So-called morality police walk around scolding people, mostly women, for dressing immodestly or wearing their headscarves too loosely, something that is very common in that country. But now the hijab and Iran's highly controversial and sometimes brutal enforcement of how and where it is worn has become the driving force of an open revolt led by courageous young women. Zan. Women. Look at these images. Women stripping off their hijabs, waving them in open defiance of authority. The catalyst for this movement was Masa Amini's death, and the protests resulting from it have been not about head coverings, but about life itself, zindagi. The second word in the chant, haunting the souls of Iran's fundamentalist rulers, zindagi means life. In these protests about women and their rights and life itself, more than 200 people, including 23 children, are believed to have lost their lives. That's according to Iran Human Rights Group. They are risking their lives for the rights of women and for something else not commonly associated with Iran, liberty. That is the final word in the chant, azadi. It translates into liberty or freedom. The story of what's happening in Iran is finally making headlines in the international press. But why only now? From day one, this revolution was led by the people of Iran, and they mobilized social media to put Masa Amini on the agenda globally when the media was silent. My question for the international media, as an American Israeli journalist myself, is why did it take a globally trending hashtag for you to cover this? When Russia attacked Ukraine, the entire world reacted immediately. When the Taliban took over Afghanistan again, there was 24-7 coverage. Yet when the people of Iran rise up after 43 years of oppression, there's silence for five days? No wonder the majority of Iranians feel they've been forgotten by the world. The Iranian regime has arrested dozens of journalists since the start of the protests. The journalist who broke the story of Masa Amini is in solitary confinement. Yet where is this being reported in the international media? Compare that to the global obsession over the death of Palestinian journalist Shirin Abu Akhla for weeks after her death on every international channel. Even today, there are 138,000 news results on Google for Iran in English, but 250,000 on Ukraine. While women were getting beaten, raped, and shot in Iran, The Guardian, MSNBC, TRT World, and China CGTN were interviewing Iran regime apologist Nagar Mortazavi. While singers and athletes were getting arrested for supporting the protests, BBC Persian was trying to whitewash the regime's human rights violations, as they have been for years, according to many Iranians. While the people were being attacked by regime forces throughout the country for demanding an end to the Islamic regime, the New York Times was publishing regime talking points from Farnaz Fasihi about the protests being merely economic, even prompting a protest outside of their offices. Now, the IRGC is moving troops into Kurdish areas of Iran after shutting off the internet to carry out more massacres. Where is the coverage? If you are a journalist who is reporting the protests as purely a call for reform or hijab, as the New York Times and Iran lobby, Nayak, argue, you are knowingly or not promoting the Iranian regime. Don't give these people a platform. Stand with the people of Iran on the right side of history. Speak the truth. Do better. The useful idiots, the, the leftists who are idealistically believing in the beauty of Soviet socialist or communist or whatever system, when they get disillusioned, they become the worst enemies. That's why my KGB instructors specifically made the point, never bother with leftists. Forget about these political prostitutes. Aim higher. This was my instruction. Try to get into, into uh, large circulation established conservative media. Rich, filthy rich movie makers, 
intellectual, so-called academic circles, cynical, egocentric people who can look into your eyes with angelic expression and tell you a lie. These are the most recruitable people, people who lack moral principles, who are either too greedy or too uh, suffer from self-importance. Uh, they feel that uh, they, they matter a lot. Uh, these are the people who KGB wanted very much to recruit. All these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders, they are instrumental in the process of the, of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation. When their job is completed, they are, non, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. Some of them, when, when they get disillusioned, when they see that Marxist Leninists come to power, they, obviously they get offended. They think that they will come to power. That will never happen, of course. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. Then he will understand, but not before that. Actually, there are no grassroots revolutions, period. Any revolution is a byproduct of a highly organized group uh, of conscientious and professional and, and organizers. This is a message from Dragon SEC team. Mr. Sir Lekshner is here. The Islamic Republic is expanding psychological operations against the common people of Iran. We will strategically monitor these operations one by one, each with a greater or lesser degree of importance, and we will prevent the expansion of these operations. For all bureaucracy, we are anonymous and we have a message for you. Iran set to be kicked out of this year's FIFA World Cup and replaced by Ukraine over Russia's alleged use of Iranian drones in its war on Kyiv. While Iranian leaders will have fun watching their national team play at the World Cup, Ukrainians will be killed by Iranian drones and Iranian missiles. Iranian people will continue to be persecuted, women, men, children who fight for their freedoms will continue to be locked up and killed by the Islamic Republic regime, while leaders watch their teams play World Cup 2022. The blood of the innocent will continue to flow as the game continues for the bloodthirsty killers. Every one of them, the drones, was produced, delivered by Iranian authorities, Iranian instructors and the military directly trained and handled drone launches that destroyed homes, museums, universities, offices, sports grounds and playgrounds, and most importantly, killed Ukrainians. We Anonymous join the protest and call on FIFA and the entire international community to immediately ban the Iranian national team from playing at the World Cup for the country's direct involvement in the terrorist attacks against Ukrainians. We ask to replace Iran with Ukraine. Replacing Iran with Ukraine would be historically and sportingly justified. We declare Operation World Cup activated and ask everyone to join the pressure on the football bureaucracy to trigger the expulsion of Iran's World Cup team in Qatar on November 20th. Your choice expels the Iranian team immediately from World Cup 2022 or wait for us. We are anonymous, we are legion, we are the oppressed people of Iran. We don't forget, we don't forgive, expect us.